Welcome back. Um, as promised, we've got MPTF influencers with Courtney Bailey and this week's special guest, Channing Dungey. Hi. Hi! <laughs> How are you? Good. It's so great to have the two of you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, as we talked about a little bit, I'm going to be here in case any residents want to call or have questions. I might hop back on if I've got an additional question because certainly I love everything Netflix does. So <laughs> there may be a moment where I'm like, hey, by the way, when's Stranger Things coming back? Um, there you go. <laughs> so in the, um, in the interim, let me hand over the broadcast to you guys. Have a great time. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Hi, Channing. Hi. So I'll give a little intro to everyone about Channing. Um, I know we all are very familiar who Channing is. She's a member of our Board of Governors. Um, we're really lucky to have incredible people on this show and involved with MPTF and guests who have accomplished incredible firsts. Um, and Channing has done so much, but she's a former ABC Entertainment president, and this is such an incredible stat. First black American president of a major broadcast network. Kind of a big deal, and I hope that title precedes a next black vice president for the entire country. So from our lips to, to God's ears, um, not political, though. We're just excited for that opportunity. Yes. Vote. Vote. Everyone, please vote. Vote, yes. vote, vote. Vote by mail. Vote any way you can. Just vote. Right? I love how everyone says vote like your life depends on it, because guess what? It does. <laughs> um, so, Jenny is now the VP of original content for the behemoth that we love, 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 Netflix. It takes up every spare time, every spare moment that I have in my life. Um... Channing is a leader, a pioneer, an advocate, a mother, a mentor, a philanthropist. Um, again, she's on our board of governors. She is a creative force and just a woman of incredible character, uh, which I, every time I say character, I do think about our shared UCLA origin and John Wooden and talking about character. I always have to bring that up, especially when I have Absolutely. <laughs> Can't not do that. Um, so let's just ask you a question of, always curious of how, I'm sure you've answered that many times, how did you get into this industry? You did, you know, go to UCLA and TFT, theater, film, and television. How did this journey first begin for you? So that, that is how it began. Uh, I actually started out at UCLA in poli sci, was what I was admitted to the school. And my interest in storytelling led me to take some theater and film classes as just electives. And I got kind of bitten by the bug, so I applied to and was accepted to the School of Theater, Film, and Television. You can't get in as an undergrad, or at least you couldn't when I was there until you were a junior. So I started my junior and senior year, and then I ended up staying for a fifth year so that I could do, um, I shot and produced one thesis film, and then I shot several others. And at the time I was really interested in maybe pursuing a career as a DP. Hmm. But while I was doing that fifth year, I had an internship as a script reader at Fox. And this was the early 90s. It was a point where the spec market was huge and really red hot. And so the scripts would come in and people, the producers would start calling the script readers, you know, you're 20 pages in and they want to know, is it hot? Should I buy it? Should I, you know, and I had gotten to know some of the producers and um, one of them, a guy named Todd Harris, who had a production deal with John Davis. I'd gotten really close with him, and so when I graduated, he offered me an assistant job, and that was actually my my first real foray into the business. Wow! So, so no desire ever to be in front of the camera. It was always the behind yeah. the scenes. No. Yeah, no. My sister is an actor, and coming up, you know, I was in a few school plays and such. But no, I have always been much more interested in sort of helping to tell the stories than actually being a part of performing them. That's wonderful. We were, um, I was just talking to a panel with Leadership California and we were talking about gender equity in the entertainment industry and uh, fantastic that you have, you have a face for the camera, but you have a brain and everything else to do all the great work that you're doing and, you know, talk about glass ceilings being shattered. I mean, uh, you, you've done it over and over again and I'm sure we'll continue to do that. So um, you were talking about, you know, starting out as an assistant, which a lot of people right now, just to 
segue, you know, we have we see a lot of assistance out of business right now, out of work. It's a really tough climate. Um, some of those positions will be coming back, some will not. I guess let's just kind of dive into the state of the industry. Um, how what, what's what's the pandemic time been like for you, Channing? And then I'll ask about kind of the future projections. But what's this been like? Well, it's been a really interesting time and a really challenging time. I mean, we, you know, the amount of productions that we had going at the beginning of March of 2020, uh, it was pretty a pretty epic number. And then we had to bring them all basically to a complete halt, um, which was challenging in its own right because you know the mechanism of doing all that is 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 tough. You know, we were just talking to Jim G last week with our next gen. We will get back to normal. But it's, it's how we define normal, and there are going to be some permanent changes. There just be the way that we do business. Um, what is that post-COVID world? Is it, to you, is it like a more efficient world? Like, I see a lot of silver linings that we're figuring out how to do things and being very creative and pivoting. What's your post-COVID world look like? So one of the exciting things to me, I think in the post COVID world, because we're so used to being hands on in person, those kinds of conversations, you know, whether like, let's talk about pitches, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So we would end up getting, you know, Netflix executives, studio executives, producers, writers, talent, everybody needs to come to Netflix at four o'clock on a Wednesday for this pitch meeting. And the logistics of that and the traffic and the complications and the this and this, you know, make it so difficult. Whereas now it's like, hey, we're going to all get on a Zoom at four o'clock. And what's also been nice is that a lot of times talent is reluctant to sort of, you know, come to a meeting, you know, at a physical location for all mm -hmm. sorts of reasons. Sure. And what's been pretty incredible and really almost, you know, really fun during this period is I've been Zooming with so much A caliber talent and it's actually been great for them to be able to engage and really have those conversations real time as opposed to everything being relayed through others. And so I do think that you're going to see even post COVID more meetings happening in, in that way over Zoom, more direct connection with people and it's a different kind of intimacy. Certainly mm -hmm. nothing replicates being in a room with someone and being able to sort of, you know, look at them across the table and engage in that way. But I do think that there are some real positives about being able to engage over Zoom and online and those kinds of efficiencies that don't require people driving 45 minutes across town for a 20 minute meeting. I think that that's gonna really help. Absolutely, the, the flexibility of scheduling is so much easier. I mean, especially us like Jen and I, when. She's in the office when I was physically in the office. That commute from Woodland Hills to anywhere <laughs> yes, can be yes. challenging. So um, much less of a commute. And, and you get what I like to refer as that kind of mullet outfit. You know, like it's like business up front, party on the bottom. <laughs> exactly. There's so much more flexibility. And you just have to, you know, top up. Um, That's right. That's right. Which, is, which has been fun. So... Another thing that thing, another topic of conversation beyond the pandemic, we have seen tremendous strides made in the world of social justice and some really awful things, of course, but some really incredible changes, tons of awareness, tons of advocacy and change. Um, you are a successful black woman who has had to, of course, deal with just being a female, uh, being a person of color, and you're you're such an inspiration to so many, regardless of color. But it, it's a tough lesson. And what what are your thoughts on where we are going as a country, and you know, and as and as the world, but with these social justice issues? And I, you've seen Netflix and other companies really step up to embrace. We don't have to be social justice organizations to take a stance and do what's right. Um, so how, how has that been as well on top of everything else going on? So it's been a lot, you know, and I think for, for um, it's been such a, such an emotional time these past few months, you know, in terms of how COVID has upended our lives and then everything that's happening right now in terms of social justice, there's, it's, it's, it's been a very emotional time for me as a wife, a parent, a friend, a colleague, and everyone's sort of processing things differently. And that's been really challenging. What I think is incredible though, is how 
this has brought this conversation and this movement to the forefront in a way that I would never have predicted. And that is fantastic. And, you know, I have always been in my career very focused on telling stories that are inclusive and diverse and representation has always been important to me. One of the reasons that I came to Netflix was because with our global audience and the opportunity to tell stories that reach people immediately, day and date around the world, uh, the opportunity to have that kind of impact in storytelling was really compelling for me. And so mm -hmm. what's wonderful is that I feel like we've already been on, on this journey and now we have added momentum sort of within the company with our production, uh, with our production partners outside of the company, you know, it feels like this is now something that everyone is talking about. And so where maybe several years ago, this felt like a path that I was on with only a few others, it now feels mm -hmm. like we're all on that path. And to me, storytelling is one of the best ways for us to impact change. When you look at something like When They See Us, which mm -hmm. was a phenomenon for us globally and really brought a social justice story home in an incredibly resonant and emotional way, you know, that, that, that kind of impact that we can have is so powerful. And I'm just, I'm glad that now we're all really united and moving in that direction together. Yeah, it's, it's really hopeful to see how accessible everything is. I, I think before um, the journey that, you know, we were all on, I, I, it's, this is clearly a room of, of women right here who care and who try to do as much as we can. It to me a lot of times felt very like a huge mountain to climb. Like how were we going to affect change? But we're seeing that happen, and that is incredible. Um, you know, people would say, "Oh, you call your local representative." That to me always felt like there's no way. I don't know how to affect major change. Um, but we're but we're seeing with the community and with the momentum. That word is exactly it. We have to take advantage so much of our momentum. Um, Speaking of advice around momentum, what would you tell people who are hearing this and inspired? And a lot of times people are like, okay, this is great. Um, I'm going to read all I can. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to be kinder. But what other pieces of wisdom can you give to people who are trying to figure out, like, what role can they play in this climate? You know, there are so many different ways to support. And what's great is that we are in, you know, a world where we're so connected, right? Every, you know, one one click of your keyboard gets you to thousands of organizations that are looking to do more and be more and to help. And whether you have the money to contribute financially or you want to help with phone banking, I mean, you know, right now I'm, I'm involved in a couple of different movements that are that are centered around just getting the vote out and getting people mm -hmm. to vote. And, you know, what is um, frustrating for a whole host of reasons, um, people in lower income communities and overwhelmingly people of color are finding it difficult to vote, finding it um, that their rights to votes are being impeded or being challenged, um, not necessarily feeling motivated to or inspired to vote. And so that is like one of the single most important things that we can do. And it's not just about voting for the president, which, you know, I think everyone needs to and should be doing. Sure. But people would be surprised at how much, how much important legislation and decisions are being made at a local and city and county level. And to vote for those officials as well is the very best way to have your voice be heard and one of the very best ways to really impact change. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, by the way, for all the work that you're doing and uh, for being such an incredible voice for us. And to, to flip it to MPTF, so you're on our Board of Governors. You are an incredible advocate. You're a supporter. You're a voice. Um, you're, you're a mentor to me um, in so many ways. But how did you first get introduced to us? How do you know MPTF? I was first introduced to MPTF um, through Courtney Valenti, who is a longtime friend and one of my first mentors in the business. And she had reached out to me um, along with a couple of other friends that she had who had been in the film industry. That's where I spent the first 10 years of my career and um, had moved over into the television space because one of the things that she was feeling as somebody who was very involved in the organization was that 
we had so much more of a presence on the motion picture side than in the television space. And Mm -hmm. so she had reached out to me to talk about it, brought me to um, the Real Lives um, event, which was so impactful and I found very emotional. And it was surprising to me how little I knew about an organization that is actually our organization, right? I mean, this is, this is, um, the work that MPTF does is so impactful for so many people in our business and in our industry. And the idea that, that the profile of MPTF sort of within, um, within, you know, the television business, but I would say particularly in sort of the younger generation of executives, um, it was surprising to me that I'd been in the business for as long as I had been, and I was only really aware of MPTF as it pertained to sort of the, like, care facility. But Mm -hmm. all the other things that the organization does and stands for was really eye-opening for me, and so I wanted to come on board and amplify that message. We still have a lot of work to do. I, I, we are kind of, you know, Hollywood's like best kept secret, which nobody wants that title for us. I mean, we've been around about to be 99 years in the end of September. So as we move into our next century of, of service and organization, it gives us the great opportunity. And I think the pandemic has really brought it to the forefront how um, our services and how much we do take care of our own. And I don't mean that self-serving, the way that people, Netflix, uh, IOXI, um, AMPIS, the way that people have stepped up to support us in supporting everyone else, that circular mission is really beautiful. So we are really looking at the opportunity through voices like yours and participation to, of course, we have money to raise. We always will. Every nonprofit always will. Yes. Money will come with awareness and education. So that's right. Um, Yes, continue to tell her story because we need it. We need we need those voices out there. Um, can I uh, can I offer a quick little something? Um, please. So when the pandemic, kind of the realities of it struck the campus and we realized we had to stop communal dining, we had to stop all of the recreational activities that were bringing people together. Um, and the internal TV station, we decided we had to shift really quickly to give the creative platform um, to make it even more accessible because this was going to be a critical time that people had to stay physically distanced, but we needed to create more social connection because social isolation is horrible. Um, So when we shifted, we had all these different things that we were trying, and it's this variety show, and we're really proud of what Organized Chaos has been able to do. But we were also able to partner with Netflix and show Hollywood in an advanced screening to the residents, and then we had a panel of the Hollywood actors that were here uh, collectively, it was incredible. Um, Dylan McDermott, Patty Lapone, and and Taylor um, Holland were Holland, Holland Taylor, yeah. sorry, were all here. And now um, Holland is nominated for an Emmy, and mm-hmm. more partnerships like that that we can bring to the campus and bring exposure to what MPTF does throughout the community would be just incredible. Absolutely. Well, we should talk about doing more of that. I, I, I didn't. I wasn't aware that that happened with Hollywood, but yes, we would be certainly open to doing more of those. Amazing. Fantastic. I know we are. <laughs> we absolutely are. And so, uh, it's awesome. been really nice that this uh, service that Jen is doing um, for the residents is now expanding to the entire community. We, we uh, what a blessing that this was created out of something um, that that is been pretty dark um but there's been the light at the end of this tunnel and continuing to shine so i wanted to, I wanted to ask whether that was a hint from jennifer Is that what <laughs> i'm just saying you know I'm, we've... I'm taking notes i wanted to know whether that's what i do when i want something but don't want to ask directly for it so, there you go exactly okay. you're like you're that. i'm just saying it was very successful and very it's a well good way done. to spread the word um well done. we're also pivoting how we're doing real stories real lives this year and okay we are recording those stories um you were at a live event where actors were up on the stage and sharing these really impactful and emotional stories this year we're going to be pre-recording all of it and doing it as a virtual event and it'd be great for it to have a home somewhere else later 
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna go now. Have fun with the rest of the interview. And, and also on the non-pitch side, we, you know, Channing, we usually sell tickets to this event. It is a fundraiser, but we're not doing that this year. So this can be accessible. It's our mission event to learn about who we are, who we take care of, the great staff who's of essential workers and beyond. So um, we hope that as many people in your network and, and in the Netflix family will just simply tune in to watch and learn. And that will go um, very far with us. So um, I know we don't have a, a lot of, oh yes. Um, okay. Just prior to the pandemic curtain closing, we were going to do a little event at Netflix, right? The yes. And yes, Tendo. Tendo and I were uh, hosting it. Yes, we were. Yeah. yeah. I hope the food hasn't gotten stale. You put it in the refrigerator. Because <laughs> we might. No, we might. I, think, I think we were doing John and Vinny's. It was going to be delicious. Okay. We, I can't wait to get back and pick that ball up. We had so much interest in from the company to come, and you know, we will be right back on that as soon as we open our doors again. Yeah. So it'd be great to give those folks you, who you were going to invite the link to Real Stories, and they can get the first uh, intro the same way you did. Follow your. That'd be great. Path. Yep. Absolutely. That's right. and, and we still have opportunities to even do a virtual something with that group to just simply get your your crew together because I, that was so frustrating. I think that event was scheduled right right when the shutdown happened. We were we were that close, Channing. But we'll get there. You and Tendo have been fantastic. Um so so we we've talked about Netflix. Let's let's end with a couple of fun questions. What's you always give me good advice. What are you watching now? What should we be tuning into? What are you really proud of? Well, uh, in my house, I have two, question. <laughs> yes, I have two small kids. My daughter is almost eight. My son is three and a half. And so we've been spending a lot of time watching Floor is Lava on Netflix, which is like the thing that they can't get enough of. Um, my children are obsessed with that. Right? It's like, it's crazy. It's crazy good. Um, yes. I'll give you guys a, a sneak preview of two pieces of content that we have coming up um, in, in just a, a matter of October. So we're right around the corner. Um, a really amazing, impactful limited series called Queen's Gambit that comes to us from Scott Frank. It is set in the 60s. Um, it follows a female chess prodigy through that universe. And it is, I mean, when I tell you that it is emotional, it is compelling, it is I, it's so incredibly well done. I'm so proud of the show. So definitely want to check that out. Oh, yeah. um, we have um, a fantastic science fiction family drama called Away, which um, Hillary Swank is top lining for us. And that actually comes out right around Labor Day. So that'll be a good one to check out. And then Emily in Paris, which comes to us from Darren Starr and is the perfect antidote, I think, for all of us who are stuck at home. If you can't get on a plane and fly to Paris for a romantic adventure, you can watch Emily in Paris on Netflix and really be excited and inspired. Channing, you're good. You're really good. That was, you, you, yes, you've done I'm, your homework. I'm making notes about all of it. All of yes, it. Yes, yes. And we will help promote and, and encourage. I mean, we're so we're so happy and honored and proud to have you in the family. Um, Jen likes to end, we I shared with you, with a question that we've been asking our residents and all of our guests. So take it away, Climber. Um, what is your favorite film of all time? That's a super hard question because mm -hmm. there are so many that I love, but the one that I will stop in my tracks at any point at any time to watch is broadcast news. <laughs> I have seen that like, I don't even know, a hundred plus times. I think it is the closest thing to a perfect movie that has ever existed. Love it. Yes. Jen, have we received that answer before? No, you're the first person to say broadcast news. So that's great. Yes. Okay, there you go. Added yes. to the list. Thanks to you. We have been very lucky with some some guests offering some some films that haven't been uh, shared before. Well, Channing, thank you so very much. We will make sure that we give you all the information about Real Stories so that we can share this nearly 100-year-old mission of MPTF with everyone in your network. So grateful for all you do. Cannot wait to see you in person. I would say I would hug you because you know me, but I'll just, I'll, we'll do an elbow. It's a virtual hug. It's all good. It's a virtual hug. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, everybody have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Thanks. Thank right. you. You too. You too. Bye. Bye, Bye, guys.